And we bring you this breaking news at 10 tonight, a 5.2 earthquake near Bakersfield. The shaking felt across Southern California. Now this was the view as you can see the camera shaking from Santa Monica. I'm Susie Sa. You're watching KCAL News at 10. And I'm Chauncey Glover, and here's a look from our seismograph right here. Look at that. This hit at about 910, and we know that it was a 5.3 magnitude earthquake striking near Bakersfield, and it shook all the way here to L.A. County. A lot of people feeling the shaking as we were talking about. Let's go upstairs to Desmond Shaw live in Sky Cal with a look. Desmond, what do you have? Yes, uh, Susie and Chauncey, I believe this is Fire 3 now. We were following Fire 5 earlier as they were scouring. Uh, I don't uh, Mike, let me know this is actually Fire 5. So they circled uh, pretty much the entire San Fernando Valley. They took off, I believe, out of Van Nuys Airport. They headed east over towards uh, kind of the northeast corner of the valley, uh, the Somar area over by Olive View Medical Center, probably looking up uh, along the hillsides there, the steep hillsides, just making sure there weren't any landslides or anything like that. We didn't hear about them finding anything uh, of that nature. They went over, uh, did a big loop around CSUN, looking at some of the structures there, then down to the 101 freeway and the 405. There were other choppers over around uh, Children's Hospital Medical Center, down around the LAX. So checking out a lot of just very important locations. Just want to uh, just kind of double checking, making sure that everything is uh, in pretty good shape and that they, they didn't suffer any damage. Went up and did a flight of our own up into the New Hall Pass, up along San Fernando Road, around the 5 and the 14, see if we saw anything unusual, any dirt in the roadway, landslides, rock slides, anything like that, all the way up to Castaic. Didn't see any issues, didn't see uh, the you know, CHP having to block any lanes for anything, so everything looks to be just fine so far from what we've seen across the uh, L.A. area now as Fire 5 is making their way uh, over to uh, the Burbank area and northbound on the 5. They've had their spotlights uh, on and off. No reports of any damage yet at this point. I believe now we're going to go uh, to uh, Evelyn Taft, so I will uh, toss it over to her now, guys. All right, we'll get with Evelyn in just one second. But first, we spoke with seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones yep. tonight to learn more about the aftershocks and the possibility this will lead to a larger event. But first, we want to get to Mike Rogers at the desk for an update on more of this earthquake. Yeah, you know, Susie and Chauncey, Dr. Lucy Jones did have a lot of valuable information, as she always does. Uh, one of the things that she talked about is how active of an aftershock period we are having with these, and not something that is necessarily unusual. She says it all depends on the topography, but I want to come to my computer here because I'm going to show you kind of that whole deal and how it works out and where exactly the earthquake was here. So uh, we're here in the L.A. area. Obviously, this is the San Fernando Valley. All of these contingents of orange dots, these are all of the earthquakes uh, that have happened. 5.2 was the primary one. Uh, you can see it's right here. And again, I want to show you the topography. It's all a lot of uh, farmland out here, which is a lot of what Kern County is. But look at all of the different aftershocks that have happened right in here. All of these orange dots are aftershocks. At last count, we were up to 25, maybe even higher uh, of aftershocks there that had happened. And again, all of these aftershocks are not small aftershocks. The smallest one I was able to find so far is about a 2.5, which for people that are living in that area, certainly are going to feel a 2.5. I also want to come here because I want to show you uh, the Did You Feel It map. This is what the USGS puts out here. All of these blue dots are people that felt it all the way down here into Riverside County, deep Riverside County, to Mecula, Murrieta, uh, even into almost part of Camp Pendleton there. But uh, what was also interesting to me is further to the north here, where you have up into the north end of Fresno, Clovis, all that area, also reporting feeling it. So this was something that a lot of people felt. We talked to people even over here in San Luis Obispo. They're feeling it as well. We talked to a lot of people who kind of described this, especially over in the Bakersfield area, we talked to somebody who uh, basically said, I, I basically saw it more than I felt it. A lot of shaking of the lights. Here in the studio, uh, because we're so far away, as Dr. Jones was describing, uh, we felt not the primary wave, but the secondary wave, which made it feel for us here a little bit more of a kind of a rolling motion. And it wasn't actually until I looked up at one of our lights here in the studio, saw it shaking, that we realized it was an earthquake. And the, the things here in the studio, the lights, the TVs that are above us, uh, they shook for quite a while. Even as we got on the air and we're talking about it, you could still see the TVs kind of shaking back and forth. So different feelings for everybody. Uh, what was also interesting in this one, especially in the greater Los Angeles area, lots of people got the shake alert from the shake uh, from the shake alert app. Uh, which is supposed to go off after uh, the quake is believed to be a certain magnitude or higher, it triggers that warning to your phones. Now, I didn't get it here in the studio, but uh, we've heard from a ton of people who were able to get it, and they got it before the actual quake. One of our executive producers saying he got the alert about 10 seconds before the shaking started, which, you know, in this situation, thankfully, there was no damage, no serious injuries, but... The design of this is for that 10 seconds to be able to save your life, for you to be able to get to a place uh, where you may be a little bit more safer. So it's good to know that that did work tonight, guys. All right, Mike, thank you so much. 
And as we we're talking about, we spoke with seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones tonight to learn more about the aftershocks and the possibility this will lead to a larger event. The location is at the southern end of the Central Valley. So it's very near where we had a magnitude 7.5 in 1952. However, it does not appear to be on the same fault as that earthquake. That was the White Wolf Fault, which dips in a different direction. And it doesn't look like this earthquake was associated with any known fault is our preliminary uh, assessment. Um, it is having a lot of aftershocks. We've already had two above magnitude four and uh, four above magnitude three, between magnitude three and four. So that's a pretty active sequence for, for uh, this very short amount of time since the event. Uh, I'll answer Mike Rogers' uh, question from KCAL. Heard people say that they saw things shake more than they felt it. Can you explain what that might be? That would be because most of us felt it from pretty far away. I felt it here in Pasadena, but it was a very mild shaking because I'm so far away from it. And so there's a variety of ways in which you'll experience the shaking, but especially if you're sitting quietly, relatively far away, you'll see things move maybe more than you'll be feeling it. Um, also, in terms of the chances that this is a foreshock, uh, we have the same answer for every earthquake. It's about a 5% chance or one in 20 earthquakes in Southern California we see are followed by something larger. They turn out to be a foreshock within the next few days. There's, we've never found anything that makes it look more likely to be a foreshock than any other earthquake. So every time we end up saying the same thing. A reminder too, that the risk of it being a foreshock drops rapidly with time. One quarter of all foreshocks are within an hour of their main shock. By the time we get to three days uh, out, it's going to be, um, uh, uh, essentially the risk will be all gone. In terms of whether it's uh, uh, unusual to have an active aftershock sequence, um, it's a normal distribution. We can talk about what the average number is, which would be one magnitude four, right? And we've already had two, so we're above the average. But the, the range is extremely large. We see variability of more than a factor of 1,000 for the same size earthquake. I mean, we've seen magnitude fives with essentially no aftershocks, and we've seen them with thousands and thousands of aftershocks. And it's a, it's a distribution. Uh, we also haven't seen any particular correlation um, between that and the chance of it being a foreshock. Um, uh, just to say that when you have a lot of aftershocks, you tend to have a lot of aftershocks, and you know you could have a larger one. Now, once again, that was seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones explaining um, more in depth as to what happened here tonight with that earthquake. Now, we also spoke to one of the content managers at the CBS station there in Bakersville. He said he got a warning about the quake and was prepared for a big one. I had the warning of the from the My Shake uh, app. Uh, just seconds before I felt the shaking, and it notified me that a 6.0 earthquake was coming. What? And I was getting ready for that shaker, but um, I, a couple seconds later, we saw the lights moving and our blinds moving just a little bit, but wasn't as strong as I uh, was expecting it to be. All right, Evelyn Taft standing by now with more on this earthquake. Evelyn. Yeah, and it, of course, if it was a 6.0 magnitude yeah. quake, it would be exponentially oh larger sure. than a 5.0. And that means 10 times larger than a 5.0. So we will take it. We will take a 5.3. And right now we're tracking the aftershocks, Susie and Chauncey. And we were counting out about 28. I'm looking at the long line right here. And it's too many to even count. And they keep coming. So we're over two dozen at this point, possibly a little more. I'm going to hone in on the area where we saw the initial shaking in Mettler and now around Mettler. Again, more than two dozen aftershocks at the moment. And this was a 5.3 on what we now call the moment magnitude scale. We've known it as the Richter scale over so many years, but it's largely sort of replaced the older Richter scales. It provides a more accurate and consistent measurement of an earthquake size, particularly for large, distant or deep earthquakes. Again, this one not as deep and not really associated with a big fault line. Dr. Lucy Jones was telling us that earlier. It is a 5.3 quake, which is considered a moderate earthquake. So that means it could cause damage to buildings. We'll show you a graphic coming up right here just to kind of give you a little more perspective, but it could cause damage to buildings and infrastructure, especially if they're not well constructed. Uh, but typically it doesn't result in widespread destruction. So let's take a look at these aftershocks. So the last time we looked at this map, we maybe had about three, four, five, six at the most aftershocks. They just keep going and going. Every red dot represents 
what we've seen shaking wise in the last hour. So just to give you an idea, again, if we put all these numbers on the map, they wouldn't even fit. But we started out at 5.3, 5.2, then 4.1, So we did see now we're counting three, 4.0 and above aftershocks and then they go down to three and two and that's where we're at right now. So we're considering uh, really in the 2.7 range just a little lower for us. So I just want to show you what that means as far as earthquake magnitude goes. So right now we're feeling two to three, which is usually not felt or maybe felt a little bit minor, no damage. So that's what we're working with as far as these aftershocks. We get about 100,000 earthquakes like this for per year, not aftershocks, but earthquakes. Just to give you an idea, happens on a regular basis. Then we go up to a four, which is considered light, and that's where we see noticeable shaking. We get about 10,000 per year as far as no noticeable shaking goes in a light category. 5.0, that's considered moderate. We get some property damage. We get about 1,500 of these a year. This is where this earthquake in Mettler is landing. And the energy equivalent, a million pounds of explosive. Remember, this is all exponential. So to get to 6.0 or 6.3, right, that's 10 times more than what we experienced tonight. So similar to what we saw in the Northridge quake or quake that I experienced in 1989, which was the Loma Prieta quake up in Northern California. But of course, a lot of us familiar with the Northridge quake, the Northridge quake, which was a 6.9, which is almost a seven, which would be considered almost a major between strong and major. So tonight, just a moderate, but still we are assessing the damage and I'm gonna send it back to you guys for the details on that. All right, Evelyn, thank you. All right, now we want to go out to Laura Perez. She is live tonight in Studio City talking to folks who felt the shakes when the earthquake hit. Laura? Yeah, well, actually, it's been a little bit um, difficult to find people who felt the quake. I understand that you all there at the studio did feel it quite uh, strongly. However, we're just a couple blocks away. We talked to more than a dozen people who uh, were visiting the store, or who work here at the store. They did not feel it, which I think just goes to show that it really depends on where exactly you are and what exactly you're doing, uh, If depending on whether or not you actually feel it. We were up in Simi Valley, my photographer and I, we're up in Simi Valley when we got the alert uh, and it said to brace for an earthquake, which we did, and then we didn't feel anything. So uh, we have been seeing on social media people in uh Castaic and Saugus and Palmdale all reporting that they felt it, um, but very hit and miss, hit and miss where we are. We did just speak with a young man who is on his motorcycle uh, and he did feel the shakes. I was driving, it was just shaking. It felt like uh, I was going to fall off my bike, actually. Have you been yeah. through an earthquake before? Not on my bike, but yeah, I have. Okay. And uh, was it a little startling, or what did you think? Uh, it was, it was, it felt, it just felt weird. I feel like, like I said, I felt like I was going to fall off. Did you immediately know what was happening? No, I did not. I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah I, thought, I thought it was something wrong with my bike. <laughs> but, and, yeah. then, and then when did you realize? Uh, somebody told me afterwards that it was, a, it was, a, it was an earthquake. Yeah, that's right. He said he thought uh, it was maybe a problem with his bike, something, uh, some sort of problem with the road. And he said it did last more than a few seconds. And then when he heard from his buddy that it was an earthquake, then he figured it all out. But again, that just shows you, you know, we were uh, bracing for it up in Simi Valley and we did not feel anything. He was on his bike. He wasn't quite sure what it was. It really does depend on what you're doing when it hits. Guys, back to you. All right, Laurie, thank you so much. Uh, no, it's different uh, feeling that while riding a bike. Sure, I imagine. Yeah. My yeah. goodness, on two wheels, it must yeah. be so different. All right, Laurie, thank you. Let's go back upstairs now to Desmond Shaw, live in Sky Cal. He is checking things out from the air just to make sure everything is okay. So far, no reports of damage or injuries, right, Desmond? That's right, Susie and Chauncey. We're over the Crescenta Valley right here. You see Foothill Boulevard and the 210 Freeway in the center of the shot. And no reports of any damage. In fact, it sounds like LA City Fire, their helicopters are going to be wrapping up their uh, earthquake survey duties. We were following Fire 5, who came over here to the Crescenta Valley as I put up the uh, satellite. So he went up into the mountains right here and then actually turned his lights off, which was a little startling. But that was because he was putting on his night vision goggles. So they were going back in the mountains and said that they were uh, headed up to go check out Coima Dam to make sure that uh, that was okay. There's also a, a dam that is up uh, Big Tahunga Road that they were going to check, and they so they had to uh, use their night vision goggles to be able to do that. But we saw them over around CSUN, all of the medical center in Silmar. They were checking out the hillsides uh, here over to the left in the Latuna Canyon area, looking for any rock slides, anything like that. 
didn't see any kind of issues. So it sounds like the fire choppers will be returning to base, just kind of their uh, standard protocol. Anytime there is a earthquake of a certain magnitude, just getting out, making sure everything is okay in Los Angeles and all appears to be well. Chauncey and Susie. Right. Desmond, thank you so much. We want to go back to the desk now, and Mike Rogers, I understand you have some video of a meeting uh, during this Quaker when it hit. Yeah, so, you know, Susie and Chauncey, it's not uncommon for us here at the desk to roll on city council meetings, roll on important sure. meetings uh, that happen. And one of them was the meeting down in Rancho's Palos Verdes, where they're talking about the landslide that is uh, happening down there. Uh, I want to show you my computer first, though, because I want to show you uh, the, the Did You Feel It area. And you can see that Rancho's Palos Verdes here is one of those places where it was felt all the way down in Huntington Beach, you know, uh, Jose and our TOC Center, our Technical Operations Center, was just telling me that there was a different meeting that we were rolling on down in uh, Huntington Beach where they also felt it. So uh, definitely people are feeling it. Now, what was interesting, though, and again, I think as technology advances, we were talking more and more about uh, the advancement of these early warnings and the meeting, and we'll show you here that the, the uh, video is going over right now, but the meeting that we were listening to down in Rancho's Palos Verdes, they actually found out about it from uh, the app first, and then you can kind of see them all sit there and then essentially kind of just wait for them to uh, feel it. And I think we do have that tape now. Uh, if we're able to take a look at that. So, okay, not yet. We're still working on that. But, um, you know, these meetings that are happening, you're, you're seeing them. Uh, that's the beauty of live streaming, you guys. So we're going continue, to continue to work on that tape. Meanwhile, I'll go back over to the USGS map, and I'll show you just kind of the series of aftershocks. And look at all of those. So these orange ones, as they turn orange, uh, those are the ones that are getting a little bit older. The red ones are the ones that are, are newer here. So, but just a ton of aftershocks. So look over on the side, which, uh, again, the smallest one that I'm seeing here is about a 2.5. So, but lots of aftershocks. It definitely would be felt a 3.5, a 3.0, uh, a 3.8. That's a pretty good, decent one. A 4.1, a 4.5. So uh, definitely aftershocks that are shaking people. And again, this is Bakersfield area here along the five and the 99. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We are going to go to that tape now, and I want you to take a listen. And again, they this is when they're sitting there talking about the uh, landslide in Rancho's Palos Verdes. <laughs> yeah, and you can hear them say, you know, you should take cover. Uh, the beginning of the tape there a little bit, you hear the, the actual shake alert app, which we can't, you know, have you listen to for, you know, obviously public safety concerns, and, and we don't want people to think that there is another earthquake coming. But uh, you hear that, they actually kind of joke about it because somebody says, oh, come on, it's in Kern County. Uh, but then they're sitting there and they do kind of feel it. And that is the alert that a lot of people got on their phones tonight, you guys. All right, Mike, thank you so much. And be sure to stay with KCAL News for continuing coverage of the earthquake near Bakersfield tonight.